welcome to Canyon Questions. Our goal is to continue to do these videos live. Uh, unfortunately, we've been experiencing some technical difficulties with the live streaming technology, so we're working on getting that ironed out. But until then, just wanted to be able to send this email out uh, pre-recorded and just put it up on YouTube for you to be able to view. Uh, but the goal is for us to continue to do 10 a.m. live stream on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and of course on Sunday morning as well. Uh, so. Stay tuned on the 10 a.m. live stream for that, and uh, we'll hopefully have that working again by tomorrow morning. But uh, today we're doing Canyon Questions, which is kind of a pastoral Q&A. Um, you can send in questions to questions at canyonprescott.org on the email address, or feel free to call up to the church office and, and let us know if you have any questions that you would want us to answer on the live stream and uh, I will throw your questions at Pastor Andrew and we'll make him answer them from the Bible. And so uh, today, uh, you know, we probably each one of these will look at talking about something a little bit related to the COVID-19 situation and probably some additional questions. So feel free to ask whatever questions you might have, whether those are COVID-19 related or church related or Bible related, theology, uh, or just practical Christian living. So let us know how we can serve you. And our desire really is that this this series would be an opportunity for us to continue to uh, just provide some some shepherding care and, and biblical pastoral insight for you, our flock. And so, uh, Andrew, today we wanted to talk a little bit about the COVID-19 situation. Um, I think for all of us, we're feeling pretty inundated by the amount of information that's coming at us. I mean, Facebook and YouTube and uh, every stream that we have and every feed on our iPhones and computers and you turn on the TV and as you said recently, you can't even turn on the Golf Channel without hearing about COVID-19. And so it's it can be overwhelming and a lot of those sources of information are constantly contradicting each other. Am I supposed to hang out with no more than 50 people, no more than 10 people, or am I supposed to avoid people altogether? I mean, there's questions abound. Information is just overwhelming. Um, what do we do with all of that information? How do we, I mean, how do we just process the information overload? Yeah. Um, I think everyone's aware of the amount of information that we have, and that is sometimes good. I believe it's sometimes not helpful also. Um, there's a book by a man named Tom Nichols. It's not a Christian book. Um, he's a professor at the Naval War College. It's called The Death of Expertise. And he makes the argument that uh, with everybody having a voice, whether it's social media or whatever it might be, that um, all opinions are um, kind of treated as equal, but they're not. There are actually people that go to school for a long time to study diseases like this. Um, so what someone's aunt who isn't an expert in infectious diseases posts on Facebook might have some truth to it, but it's based on real limited information and could even be based on false information. So I think, you know, when we think about all the information coming to us, I think it's helpful to, to kind of focus in on where am I getting my information? Um, in my mind, there are, there are two sources whose information I want. It's experts in any field. If I'm asked a question about anything, I want to know what those who have studied that field say. So it's experts. Um, and secondly, it's authorities. What do the authorities in my life say about this that I need to abide by? Because biblically speaking, Romans 13, I'm supposed to abide by what the government says. And so... Um, experts and authorities. Uh, I had a, a wonderful friend of our family, a dear friend of ours, uh, send me an email and ask me, what do you think about this article? And it was an article written about um, the COVID-19 virus. And it was written by a mathematician about an infectious disease. And I just said, I wasn't trying to be dismissive of her at all. She's a friend of ours. I said, I don't know that I'm the best person to digest what a mathematician says about an infectious disease. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm a theologian. That's that and New York's mess, New York Mets baseball is basically all I got. Um, I'm just not an expert in that. So I don't even know that I'm the right person to digest information coming in and out. So um, we even as elders have turned to medical experts. We've got some in our congregation. We've read some of them. 
Um, even the medical experts in our congregation know who to read and what to read. Um, so we paid attention to those things. We've also paid attention to what the government tells us. Um, I have Romans 13 here. Romans 13 says this, that the government is God's servant, verse 4, for your good. And so um, e even when I talk about who are the authorities in your life, I think people might think, well, the government's corrupt, or how can we trust this branch of government or that branch of government? Um, and at the end of the day, the God who we can trust tells us to submit to an imperfect institution that is in charge of governing our lives, so to speak. And so I don't trust the government because I think they're perfect. I abide by what they say until they ask me to sin because my perfect God told me to. So again, when we think about information overload, I want to know who are the experts, knowing that they will have differing opinions themselves, mm -hmm. and who are the authorities? Who am I supposed to submit to? Mm -hmm. And so that's how I think about information. I don't think it's helpful to read everything on the internet just because it comes up on your feed. Yeah. Um, and, and again, you might read some things that sound good and might, not, might have some uh, false information in them. But at the end of the day, you are trusting in a sovereign God ultimately. Um, but I do think it is helpful to kind of like narrow down who we listen to, mm -hmm. knowing that even those things will have some maybe compromises in truth or come from a biased vantage point. But at the end of the day, I want to know what experts and authorities say. Yeah, that's helpful. That's really helpful. Um, yeah, because you turn on your iPhone or your computer or anything, and you you flip to Facebook or Instagram, you're basically you're getting what the algorithm sure. uh, you know puts up there for you yeah. based on what you've interacted with before. Doesn't necessarily mean that the opinion that's coming across on your phone. I mean, I can get online and write something about COVID nineteen. Sure doesn't make me an expert yeah. on infectious diseases. Yeah. Probably shouldn't listen to what I have to say about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, <me laughs> Go to either. the experts. Yeah. yeah. So that's helpful. Um, w one of the other things that we're often that we're thinking through right now, and you hear a lot of people say, like, well, we just need to trust the Lord. Um, you know, with everything that's going on in the world these days, we just need to trust the Lord. True statement. Yeah. Um, it can sometimes, um, well, it's, can sometimes come across as unhelpful when we just say trust the Lord mm -hmm. and we don't think about what that really looks like mm -hmm. or we could say things like you just need to have faith mm -hmm. that could be such a nebulous thing to say yeah what is it what does it look like on a day-to-day -day basis as I live my life how do I know if I'm trusting the Lord yeah what does it look like to trust the Lord yeah yeah, I think you said that well. We can say it in kind of a blanket way, an overarching way, but not think about what that actually looks like. Um, we all want to trust the Lord. We all um, know that we're supposed to trust the Lord. <clears throat> we want to, um, but we want to do that in specific ways. Uh, I'm a firm believer that I think I'm trusting the Lord more than I actually do. Um <clears throat> I remember one time Michelle asked me, are you anxious about whatever was going on? And I said, no, quick no. <laughs> because in my head, I know that theologically I'm not supposed to be anxious. <clears throat> but then she pressed a little further and said, I think you are. And she was right. So theologically, we know we're not supposed to be anxious. We know we're supposed to trust the Lord. But that doesn't mean that we always are. And Our so, knee-jerk reaction, because we know we're supposed to trust the Lord. Someone says, hey, we just need to trust the Lord. And immediately, without any yeah. thought about it, we think, I am. I am. Okay, yeah, I I'm, am. I am trusting the Lord. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm a Christian. I am trusting the Lord. Yeah. Uh, I'm reminded of Psalm 31. I'll, I'll read it uh, in a second. Um, I think in situations like this, here's where I see people tempted to not trust the Lord. Um, COVID-19 information coming at us. Uh, I think you've got well-meaning Christians on either end of a spectrum. Um, and I think this is true in our church as well. You've got people who say th this is, people are making too big of a deal of it. Um, the the economy's suffering too much um, based on the, the relative threat that this really is. And so you've got people way on that end, which you can understand why they might say that to some degree. You've got people way on the other end 
everyone in the world should self-quarantine for at least 14 days or at least everyone in our city or we, we should really go to that extreme. Um, and I'm not dismissing either one of those arguments. I think you can find truth in both of those. But what I think happens is we hold one of those positions and then where we fail to trust God is when we try to control what other people do so that we get the result that we want. Mm -hmm. So if everyone believed like I believed and everyone was convinced like I am convinced of this particular truth, then we'll all be okay. Or, or someone says, I think if everyone believed that we should quarantine for a month and if everyone just did that, we'd be okay. And what you try to do when you don't trust the Lord, you try to control other people. Mm -hmm. You try to control every situation. And so <clears throat> I'm all for sharing information Hey, read this article, read that. But when you start to try to press people because you're trying to control them, because you want the outcome to be, let's get this over with, mm -hmm. that's where you're really taking something that's in God's hands and trying to take it for yourself. So um, what I would say to the person who might be struggling with trusting the Lord in this or might be frustrated with other people who aren't responding like they think they should, I would just say, have your opinion, You know, get information. We talked about that. Get information, have your opinion. But I think it's important for a Christian to not need their opinion to be adhered to by everyone all the time. Because that's just, it's never going to work. Um, whether it's in your house <laughs> or in your church or in your country, no one's ever going to do what you think they should do at all times. Mm -hmm. And so when I say trust the Lord, that's what I mean. Like, Lord, I don't have to have my way in how society works. And I know this is all in your hands. I've got an opinion. I might share it, but I don't have to have my way. This is literally in your hands. And, and the, the Bible recognizes Christians are going to have differing opinions. about You think about Romans 14. That's right. Christians are going to have different opinions. Yeah. And the solution is not fight about it until someone gives in and everybody agrees. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, I think of this verse. I mean, listen to Psalm 31, 14. I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hand. So... My days are not secured by my actions or other people following my plan or what, what I think they should do. My days are in the hands of the Lord. So I would say when it comes to trusting the Lord, especially in this situation, especially in light of what we think other people should do, fine, have your opinion, no problem. Um, don't need other people to do what you think they should do. Allow that to be in the Lord's hands. And I would just say live every day with really saying, Lord, this is my life. It's all in your hands. I'm literally not in control of any of it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not in control of my family. I'm not in control of our money. I'm not in control of anything. He literally is. I think I'm in control of it, but he literally is. He can do whatever he wants. Um, I said this a couple Sundays ago, the last time we met um, as a congregation, I said, you know, we don't know what's going to happen next week. And then later on, we thought, do we ever know what's going to happen next right. week? I mean, yeah. we, don't, we don't ever That's know. That's always true. We don't ever yeah. know. Yeah. And so I think to trust the Lord is really to say, I'm going to do what I think is right based on wisdom that you've given me. And, and here it is, open hand. Mm -hmm. Do what you will. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's what it looks like to trust the Lord in a situation like this. Yeah. Well, we know in any one thing that God is doing, he's doing 10,000 things. Sure, or right? more. Yeah. yeah, and we might get to see one or two of those things, you know, if if one of the good things that comes out of the COVID-19 situation is that we learn to better trust the Lord. Yeah. Then yeah. what a wonderful outcome. Yeah, it's not a bad place to be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anything else you'd want to say as we're wrapping up our Canyon questions for the day? Uh, I would just encourage people to be gracious with one another. Um you can ask any expert what's so an expert with a strong opinion about what we should all be doing today and you can ask them with their strong opinion no matter where they are on the spectrum where are we going to be in six months they don't know um, they really don't know where we're going to be in an hour right the lord knows it all he has a plan so i think it's time for the people of god to not fret literally not fret about tomorrow and what other people are doing, but to actually trust that it's all in his hands. Yeah. So I would say be gracious with one another. 
because n- this is all this is new for everyone. It's yeah. new for churches. It's new for families. It's new for employers, employees. So I would just say be gracious with everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So whether it's that family has chosen to interact socially in this way, even though we've chosen this way, or it's that church has chosen to do things this way, online or not online, this way or that way, even though we've chosen to do it this way, there's going to be differences of opinion. Yeah. And ultimately what the Lord prioritizes in the midst of all of that is unity amongst Christians, yeah. even when they disagree. Yeah, and I think what it's important to note that <clears throat> just because <clears throat> people have differences of opinion, it doesn't mean they're both right. So you see you know, the, the famous videos recently about all the spring breakers in Florida and just the arrogance with which they're going about their business. And, you know, it's like, that's a rather selfish way to live. <laughs> but when it comes to the body of Christ, people literally are making different decisions for reasons that, that are, are, are because of heartfelt worship. Mm-hmm. But like, I'm not, I'm doing this because I believe it honors the Lord the most. And then family next door might be doing something else because they think that honors the Lord. So that's where Romans 14 would say that, you know, you talk about a Sabbath day or which one keeps the Sabbath, which one doesn't. Each one's keeping the day or not keeping the day out of a devotion to the Lord. And the Lord knows that. So the Lord knows hearts. So I think it's it's definitely a time where Christians must have grace for one another because they are trying to make the right decision based on devotion to the Lord. They might be making totally opposite decisions. Right. But their hearts do want to honor the Lord. So I think be gracious with everyone, but especially your brothers and sisters yeah. who want to honor the Lord. Yeah. And the way, the way I mean, Romans 14 begins, each one should be convinced in his own mind. Sure. Yeah. Not argue until someone gives in so that you both have the same opinion. Yeah. Each one should be convinced in his own mind. And Romans 14 ends, pursue what makes for peace and mutual upbuilding. That's right. Well, thanks for joining us for another Canyon Questions. Uh, Our hope is to continue to do this on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Canyon Questions. You can send questions to questions at canyonprescott.org or call up here to the church office and let us know if there are ways that we could serve you with these videos.